In a market where PC gamers are struggling to build themselves a gaming PC at a reasonable cost due to the GPU shortage, people are looking for alternatives, whether that be a gaming laptop, a console, or biding their time with lower-end hardware. As a stopgap solution, the Ryzen 5 5600G is a great option in my opinion. I've been genuinely impressed at what this APU with its integrated graphics is capable of. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. For this video, we'll be taking a look at a gaming PC build that I did that has no GPU. Recently, a family member of mine reached out and asked if I'd be able to build an entry level system for their kids. This will be mainly used for light gaming, Roblox, and schoolwork. So the good thing was that I didn't need to buy any sort of high-end hardware for this build, and while I would have preferred to add in an entry-level discrete GPU in the system, something like a GTX 1650 or RX 5500 XT, those just aren't available, and if they are available, it's not for reasonable prices. Now initially I was thinking about perhaps just getting something like a Ryzen 3 3300X, which is a decent quad-core processor with 8 threads, and a GT 1030, again for basic light gaming or mainly to serve as a video out since the 3300X doesn't have integrated graphics. The Ryzen 3 3300X goes for around 190 Canadian dollars, and a GT 1030 retails for about 100 to 120 dollars depending on the model, so in total we're looking at roughly 300 dollars for those two parts. Now the day after I had priced the system out, I realized that AMD's 5600G and 5700G APUs had hit the market. The 5600G according to multiple reviews has been shown to trade blows with low-end discrete GPUs like the GT 1030, which is decent, but we'll get into performance later on in the video. Now let's take a step back, the 5600G. Let's talk about what's going on here. This is a CPU with 6 cores and 12 threads, and these are 6 Zen 3 cores. It's got 7 Vega compute units, wish it was RDNA 2, but that's coming next gen. It's got a boost clock of up to 4.4 GHz for the CPU and 1900 MHz for the GPU. 16 MB of L3 cache. Now that is a reduction of L3 compared to the 5600X, which is going to hurt it, but it will still provide respectable gaming performance. PCIe Gen 3 support only. Come on AMD, again with the stupid segmentation that is just really unnecessary if you ask me. This part really should have just had support for PCIe 4.0 like the rest of the Ryzen 3000 and Ryzen 5000 parts. I really don't know what AMD was thinking here, this sort of segmentation is just, oh, it's just stupid. And this part has a default TDP of 65 watts, but if you dive into any sort of PBO tweaking, you can raise it higher. Here in Canada, the 5600G retails for around $330, but the perks of knowing someone close in the supply chain came in handy for me here, and I was able to get mine for $280 Canadian dollars, which is about $30 below MSRP. And that was a little cheaper than had I gone with a 3300X and a GT1030. So essentially, for a lower price, I get the same GPU performance, but also a much more powerful CPU. Not that they need that much CPU horsepower, but if it's the same price, it's a no-brainer. But should their needs become more demanding in the future, they'll be covered, and later down the road if they decide they want a discrete GPU once things settle down, they'll have a decent CPU to pair with it. Also, this CPU originally comes with a Wraith Stealth cooler, and I'm not really a fan of that cooler. Its performance isn't that great, so I had a Wraith Prism laying around which should do a much better job at keeping our CPU cool and allowing it to boost higher, hopefully yielding some better performance. Moving on to the motherboard, we have the MSI B550M Pro VDH Wi-Fi. Now this is a fantastic motherboard which has pretty much everything you'd need from a modern motherboard. Decent VRMs, 4 memory DIMMs with overclocking support, 2 M.2 slots, PCIe 4.0 support, onboard Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Unfortunately, the only thing it's missing is a USB Type-C port in the back I.O. However, this board only costs 100 Canadian dollars, which I think is impeccable value. Also get this, it has a BIOS flash button which can be used to flash the board to the latest BIOS without having the CPU installed. That's such a convenient feature and I did take advantage of it because I wasn't sure whether or not this board came with a BIOS installed that supported the 5600G. Overall, this is a job well done by MSI at an excellent price point. For the RAM, we've got 16GB of G-Skill Ripjaws V-Series 2800MHz RAM. I had this kit laying around, so I thought I'd utilize it for this build and help some cost savings there. We might be holding back the 5600G's iGPU by using slower DDR4 memory, but hey, it's free and again, for the scenarios this PC will be used in, it's more than sufficient. For the storage, we're going with 500GB of NVMe storage from Western Digital. This is their SN750 line, which is an excellent Gen 3 NVMe drive. If they need more storage, we can always just toss in 
in another SSD or hard drive down the road. For the power supply, my local Canada computers had this unit on sale for just 80 bucks. This is the ADATA Core Reactor, a 650 watt unit that's gold certified and fully modular. Now ADATA isn't regarded as a brand known for quality or honesty, but this unit is actually OEM'd by Channelwell Technology, who make really good quality power supplies. So that's the reason I went with it. 650 watts is already overkill for this build at most. The total system power consumption will probably be like 100 watts tops under the heaviest loads, but again, at least this way, if they decide to throw in a GPU, they'll be covered. Now for the case, we didn't necessarily need anything too high end since this was going to be a budget build, so we did need to, you know, work with the budget here and do a bit of cost saving. So I decided to go with the BitPhoenix Nova Mesh TG SE ARGB. Wow, that was a mouthful. But this is a fairly recent case, but it's actually based off a really old chassis and building in it wasn't the most pleasant experience, as I felt like the space was kind of cramped. But for $55, this case does offer pretty good value, as it comes with 4 ARGB fans installed, a tinted tempered glass side panel, a PSU shroud, and at the back you even get an integrated fan and RGB controller. I really wasn't expecting that, so it was a pleasant surprise. So those are all the parts that we need for this entry level gaming PC build, should be a fairly straightforward one. So I'll leave you guys with this time lapse build and after that we'll go over how it turned out and some benchmarks. Alright guys, we're back and I gotta say, the build turned out really well. I'd say the main complaint I had building inside this case was the lack of space to route cables and but we made it work. I was glad that this case came with multiple fans already installed, so right from the get-go you have optimal airflow, but this setup should be fairly easy to cool anyways. Aesthetically, the build looks pretty good, and with the RGB lighting from the fans and the Wraith Prism, I think the kids will really like it. Now in terms of performance, let's move on to some benchmarks. I didn't do a full-on benchmark suite for this video as there are plenty of 5600G reviews out there, but I did want to go over some just to give you guys an idea of how the system performs and give my thoughts on it in regards to how it does. So first up we've got Cinebench R23 and here the 5600G attained a multi-core score of 10,545 and for its single core score we attained a score of 1,442. I probably could have gotten higher scores had I used a beefier cooler but nonetheless from a 6 core CPU these are some impressive results and you know I keep reiterating this again but this is a build that's going to be used for younger kids who aren't really going to be utilizing all that CPU horsepower and it's more than sufficient. Now on to our first game and I wanted to test out Doom Eternal. At a resolution of 1080p using low settings, the 5600G attained an average FPS of 41 and 29 for the 1% minimums. That's not great, but it's passable for a playable experience. You have to remember though that this is just an APU with integrated graphics, it's not a discrete solution, and the fact that we can play Doom Eternal like this is rather impressive. 
Up next, we've got Forza Horizon 4, and this game at 1080p using medium settings ran pretty well. We attained an average FPS of 53 and 44 FPS for the 1% lows. For a racing title like this one, that was a fairly smooth experience, and I gotta say this APU has been astonishing at the experience it's been able to deliver. Now games like Doom Eternal and Forza are modern AAA titles that would require the user to get a discreet GPU if they want a really buttery smooth experience, but an APU like this one is more so geared towards people who want to play titles that aren't so demanding that many esports titles are. So let's take a look at CSGO here. At 1080p with low settings, the 5600G was able to run this title at 132 FPS average and 86 for the 1% minimums, and while you're all probably still used to seeing hundreds of FPS in this title, from faster gaming PCs, these results would still deliver the user an excellent smooth experience. You might not want to try and get number one in the comp speed, but it's still fine for most players. Fortnite is another title amongst the esports crowd, and at 1080p with low settings and the resolution slider at 90%, we're able to attain an average FPS of around 93 and 66 for the 1% lows. Again, same situation as CSGO, you can obviously get much higher performance with a dedicated GPU, but this 5600G by itself is still delivering great performance for us. The last game I wanted to take a look at was Rocket League. At 1080p with performance quality settings, the 5600G attained an average FPS of 78 and 44 for the 1% lows. Another title where the 5600G can allow the user to have a really fun time without the need for a GPU. Now that we've gone through the performance numbers, it's time I give you guys my conclusive thoughts on the 5600G and whether or not you should buy one. I think that for integrated graphics, the performance here is quite decent. As I mentioned in the start of the video, if you're in the market for a gaming PC and you absolutely have to have one right now, but can't find a GPU, then I'd say do a build using the 5600G and bide your time with it. It can play almost all the popular esports titles, with some exceptions at 1080p 60fps, granted you don't go all crazy with settings. Also, if you're someone who doesn't care about that stuff, and you also don't care about new games, then hey, this might be all that you actually need. You know, one of the traps I often find that people fall into when it comes to PC hardware and PC gaming, and I'm guilty of this myself, is that we get so hyped up about all these new powerful CPUs and GPUs that can play the latest Battlefield at 4K, ray tracing at 120 FPS, and all that good jazz, and if you don't have it, you start to feel left out or incomplete for lack of a better word. But when it comes to PC gaming, there's a massive extensive library of games that have come out over the years that you can always go back and try, which some games still really hold up well and don't need the latest or powerful hardware to run it. You know, it's funny because when I installed my 3080 into my system that's hooked up to my 4K OLED, I was like, I'm going to try this new title or that new title at 4K with ray tracing turned on and HDR and all that good jazz, but I was going through my Steam library and an old game caught my eye, and that was Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen. This is a fairly old game at this point, which was ported to the PC in 2016, and I was like, oh yeah, I should give this a try, and I did. And you know what? I had an absolute blast with it. I obviously didn't need a 3080 for that, that even at 4K, my older GPUs would have, probably would have ran it fine. The point I wanted to make was that if you aren't able to get the latest GPU and you have to bide your time with older or low end hardware, it might suck at first, but it's not the end of the world. Just stop thinking about the hardware market and instead go through that massive, extensive PC gaming library out there because I guarantee you, you'll find something that can run on your machine in its current state and you'll have a blast. Anyways, I went off on a tangent there, the 5600G in my opinion delivers great performance for an APU and is an excellent choice as a stopgap solution. If you're interested in picking one up, I'll leave a link to where you can purchase it down below in the video description. I hope you guys found this video to be informative and helpful. Let me know your thoughts down below. Check out the video description on ways to support the channel and for my other videos. If you guys are interested in more content like this, then make sure you're subscribed. Thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you guys in the next one.